the night Mick Foley lost his ear and the referee flipped it over to me and what Oh my god, that's I- right now. Hold on here. We got to it won't spoil the show cuz cuz many people are going to be out of range. We don't want to piss off the, the we got a listener in the Isle of Malta. We really do. I've heard <laughs> from him. I know it's a fact. Um, was it tell, Baron Secluda? <laughs> it was not. It was not the fine Baron. But uh, <laughs> tell it. You were the ring announcer the night the tour in Germany, yep. and to take people through what exactly happened because it's not every day you get pitched an ear when you go to work. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you would you never know what you're going to do until you're in that situation. Um, but it, you know, it wasn't a surprise if you remember. Um, Mick's ears were, they were just hanging off his head. You know, I I remember him in the breeze (laughs) dangling there. I remember, uh, bringing him with me to my mom's place in Florida and his ears were all infected and pussy. And she took some kind of alcohol to clean them out. And he was squealing in her living room. It it was so it was going to happen. It was just a matter of when and where. Well, you know, the, the, the thing was, cause he did that old hangman spot, which, yep. which is, is easy to do. And that's the one thing the, the ropes above cables on a ring and the old WWF rings with the rope. So they still have them where you can tie up your arms or tie your head in at the old hangman spot. But cactus was doing that spot with the the WCW rings had cables and when he would go over the top and grab the one rope and twist it around his neck basically he's got now two steel cables tied around the sides of his neck so the clock is ticking on how long he can stay there <laughs> without passing yeah. out and yeah, absolutely and and he was it, it, it was wearing on his his ears probably had they were probably already what do they call it scored <laughs> or you know the, the the when you tear the bill off you know the they were already perforated they were yeah, ready I, to come he was taping them down to the side of his head i mean <laughs> um and and on that particular night I think it was Scorpio who was out first. We had we didn't have a an American ring crew. We had stagehands from Europe, so they didn't know how to set up a ring. And we did have a couple of referees who knew what they were doing, but eventually they were both sent home uh, for uh, I think there was a, like a medical emergency in one case, and the other guy got sick or something. It was probably Nick Patrick and uh, uh, another Pee Wee Pee Wee Anderson. Yeah, maybe it was Pee Wee. It was either Pee Wee or Mike. So, um, so we had a French referee who didn't speak English, and we had um, we had stagehands from Europe to maintain the ring. So I think it was Scorpio who went out for the first match, and when he came back, he told Flair, who was in charge that night, um, you know those those ring ropes are way too loose. Someone's going to get hurt. So Flair told the stagehands to go out. <laughs> And tighten up the ropes. And man, did they tighten up the ropes. <laughs> so when Cactus did that spot, they were extra tight around his neck. Oh, good Lord. So that when he pushed himself through to uh, lower himself to the ground, to the floor, um, they didn't, it didn't come off at that point, but it, it was just hanging. And he got back in the ring. He was wrestling <laughs> Vader. And it was uh, a Euro- they had a European uh, um, tournament. It was it was a match in the European tournament that was going to continue night after night after night throughout Germany. And uh, so when you come to my show and you look at the video, you see his ear fall off after he gets back in the ring, and they're you know they're pounding each other, and you see the referee pick up the ear. And I don't know what's going on. I don't know that he's holding his ear. And he comes over and he starts spouting off in French. I have no idea what he's talking about. Those French, to... those French are big spouter offers, too, I've known. <laughs> and, but I, I did hear the word ambulance, ambulance, ambulance. And I did, you know, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a linguist, so I, I could figure out that was ambulance. <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that's it. I know it's a it's a leap, but you were able to make <laughs> your back multiple linguistics. So, um, so he, a cunning linguist, from what I've heard, Gary. he gives it to me, and I know 
that the only way, the only shot in hell that we have of being able to save the ear so that it at one point can be reattached to Cactus's head is to put it on ice. So, uh, you know me, I would never leave ringside. You know, I, I was a steady Eddie, and I was, but in this particular case, I took it to the back. And uh, did, you ha- to- did you have it in your hand, uh, waving it up over your head, like, look out, the ear is coming through? <laughs> no, I, I, it was like laying, I had my hand out flat, and it was laying in my hand. Oh. And because I didn't want to. You know, I didn't want to just smudge it up. I, didn't, I don't know. What do, what do you do with an ear? <laughs> did, never, you resist, <laughs> did you resist the urge to whisper some sweet nothings in it while it was sitting here? <laughs> so, um, so after I was able to convince Flair that I actually did have a, an ear in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> because was it was that, very was that, no, how, did, how did you How did you present that? Did you say, Rick... Here is mix ear. I have mix ear in my hand. What was the words? That's which exactly what I said. I said it, it was very dark backstage. It was uh, one of those big German sports hallas, and um, every once in a while there was a down light in the back, and so I'm essentially in the dark, and Flair, and Flair says to me, "What are you doing back here?" Because he knew I would never leave ringside. I said to him, "Rick, I've got Cactus's ear in my hand." He said, what? I said, I've got Cactus's ear in my hand. He said, are you feeling all right? I, just, <laughs> I took him by the, the arm and I moved him to underneath one of these down lights. And I said, look, I, we, we have to find ice. I have to put this on ice. And he says, holy shit, that's a human ear. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's what I've been trying to tell you. And Sting heard it, and he was in one of the uh, one of the side rooms, and he comes out and he looks at it, and you know it was he just said, "Wow, that's really cool! Look at hey guys, come here, look at this!" <laughs> and, the, and the guys compiling out of the of the locker room, looking at the ear, and uh, I did find the doctor. He was with um, I think he was with Booker T in one of the um, one of the last locker rooms because this is you know big sports hall, which is a circular. Um, and as I'm going back to the ring, because they, he, he, they continue to wrestle, and the match had ended, and as I'm going down to the ring, um, Cactus is coming toward me with his hand over where his ear used to be, and he just looks at me, and he, you know, he was in shock, and he just looked at me, as, and he didn't stop, he just kept on walking, but he just said, and I swear to God, Jimmy, he said this, bang, bang, I lost my ear. So, so, so those are the kinds of stories that I tell at my stage show, and uh, I, I have a good time, you know, with it, and I love interacting with the people, and uh, we just have a lot of fun.